Hi, my name is Beth and I'm one of the dietitians from Intermountain Home Care and Hospice. In this video, we will go over how to give an enteral feeding with the Covidin Kangaroo Joey Pump with the Feed and Flush bag sets. First, collect all the supplies necessary to give yourself an enteral feeding. First, the Kangaroo Joey Pump, your formula, which may be ready to feed or powdered, a bowl or cup with very warm water, and a 60 ml syringe used for flushing, your feeding tube, which may look like any of the following, the bag set with both the feed and flush bag, you maybe buy a sink or something that might have running water to rinse out the bag set if necessary, hand sanitizer, the IV pole with the pole clamp attached, as well as the charger, and this helpful sheet about how to give an enteral feeding with the Joey Pump feed and flush set. As you can see on the back of the Joey Pump, there's a metal notch that can connect exactly to the pole clamp. We'll make the connection and secure it in place. First, wash or sanitize your hands. We're going to fill the feed and flush bag set. The purple bag is for the formula or the feed and the blue bag is going to be for the water or the flush. Start by shaking up the formula Opening it up and pouring it into the feeding bag. Next, we'll take the cap and close it by pressing down where it says press here with two fingers. Next, we'll fill the flush bag. We'll take the water and fill the flush bag. And press with two fingers to close. Now we're ready to hang the feed and flush bag on the IV pole. Remove the paper tape. And also remove the end cap on the end of the um, tubing. If you find that your tubing does not connect easily to your feeding tube, please contact our enteral team for additional help with troubleshooting. Next, we'll power on the pump. We hear the pump powering on. On the screen, it indicates load a set. Loading the bag set. Take the purple tab facing out and seat it into this first position. Wrap the flexible purple tubing around the rotor and seat in the other portion in the second section. Close the door and ensure that the tab lines up with the blue slit. Now we see on the screen, it reads set loaded. Next, we will prime the tubing. How we do this is by selecting prime pump. Notice on the screen, there's a couple different options here. First, it will say auto prime, which will mean that the pump will automatically pull the water and formula through the tubing to make sure that there's no air in the line. We want to prime to make sure that there's no air getting into the stomach, causing bloating or abdominal discomfort. The other two buttons on here, hold to prime flush and hold to prime feed, you'll manu manually hold these buttons and the flush will pump through the water or the um, flush in the blue bag through the, the tubing. And if you select hold to prime feed, you'll need to hold this down manually 
to pump through the formula through the bag. We are going to select Auto Prime. On the screen, it indicates priming. And we can hear the rotor spinning around. The formula is starting to fill the tubing. We can notice that there's a little bit of water starting to fill first, and then followed by formula. The water first leaves the tubing, and then the formula follows. We can see that there's still a small amount of air in the line, so I'm going to press and hold, hold to prime feed, which will finish the priming for us. We can see a little bit of formula drip out, indicating that there's no more air in the line and we're okay to start our feeding. Now that the tubing is filled with formula, we're good to press done. Next, we are going to select adjust feed. There's two options, feed rate and feed VTBD. We will first select feed rate. On this screen, it indicates um, zero mils per hour, since we haven't entered anything yet, we see 400 is the max. The Joey pump can go from 10 mils to 400 mils for the feed rate. For the purposes of this education, we're going to set the feed rate to 36 milliliters per hour. The buttons on the left correspond with the hundreds place, the tenths place, and the ones place. Set it to 36 mils per hour. We're set. However, if you were to make an error with programming and say set it to 46, we can continue pressing that button till it goes up to 9 and then resets back down to 0. 36 is our desired rate. We'll select enter. We can check on the screen and see that the feed rate is set to 36 mils per hour, which is exactly correct as determined by our discharge orders. Our next step is going to be look at the feed VTBD. This means volume to be delivered. For our purposes, we would like to ensure that it remains at zero and that we do not enter a number into this screen. The reason why is that if we were to enter a number, say 50, into this screen, the pump will physically alarm every single time 50 milliliters of formula has been delivered. This can get annoying and confusing to patients. However, we prefer to wait until the formula in the bag runs out and that will give us an alarm to refill the feeding bag. So ensure that the feed, VTBD, remains at zero. Select enter. Next, we will press done. The next button we'll need to press on the left is adjust flush. The first button is flush volume. For the purposes of our education, we are going to use 30 milliliters per hour every four hours. Now we are going to set the flush to 30 mils. We'll again use the buttons to the left that correspond to the place values to set 30 mils. We'll press enter. The next button is flush interval, and this means how frequently the pump will flush. So we want it to flush 30 milliliters an hour every four hours, so we are going to set this to four. Note that the max is 24 on this pump and the minimum is one hour, meaning if you set one in this box, it will flush every one hour, and if you set 24 in this box, it would flush one time in a 24 hour period. Since we wanted to enter four, we'll press enter. Next, we'll press done. So, we'll take a look at our screen. We can see that the set is loaded. 
we can physically see that our tubing is primed. We can see that our feed rate is set to 36 milliliters per hour and our flush is set to 30 mils every four hours. I do want to point out that in the middle here, this um, zero ml flush and zero ml fed acts as a tracker. It'll switch back and forth between the amount delivered for feed and the amount delivered for flush. There's nothing we can do to change this amount, but just keep in mind that this is kind of a tracker letting you know how much has been delivered from the feed bag and how much has been delivered from the flush bag. What I'd like to do at this point is turn the pump off by holding the power button and we'll turn it back on to show you what it will look like after you've programmed your feed and flush rates. On the screen, prior settings pops up and it gives us the options keep settings or clear settings. Because we just entered in our desired feed and flush rate, we're going to choose keep settings. We chose keep settings and again we can see the 36 mils per hour, 30 mil flush every four hours and our set is loaded, our tubing is primed, and we're good to go ahead and start our feeding. What we'll want to do is draw up 60 milliliters of very warm water with your NFIT syringe. We're going to get our feeding tube ready by uncapping the feeding tube, connecting our NFIT syringe with the flush, unclamping the feeding tube, and administering the flush. Flushing is very important. Please see the next slide for recommended flushing. After the flush is delivered, unconnect from the infant syringe, and connect the primed tubing. Do not over tighten. We're all good to go. We will press run. We can hear the rotor start to turn in the pump. On the screen it tells us running and we can see a black teardrop dripping down by the feed rate. This lets us know that the pump is running and we are administering a feeding. When you're done with the feeding or need to stop for any reason, select the button hold. When the formula has run out of the bag, you can see that the bag is now empty, the pump will alarm feed error. It gives you the options bag empty, clog in line, valve not loaded. We've finished one segment of the feeding but still have an additional carton to give to the patient later today. What we're going to do is we are going to take the feed and flush bags. We'll move the IV pole with us by a sink or something like that. Well, we can actually keep the flush because it is full. We'll keep that on the IV pole. We're going to take the feed bag, and since we're going to reuse it for another feeding within a 24-hour period, we are going to open it up. Oh, and mind you, this can still remain connected to the patient if they are able to get up and walk over to a sink area with the IV pole. Everything can remain connected. If the patient is not able to walk or move over to a sink area in order to rinse this bag out, what you can do is disconnect the patient from the tubing and just take the tubing, the bag sets, the IV pole, and the pump along with you to like a sink area. Since we don't have a sink for our demonstration today, we'll open up the feeding um, bag. We're going to discard any remaining formula. Our bag is pretty, <laughs> everything's gone from it, so we don't really need to do that. But what we will take is from the faucet or a tap, um, pour some warm water into the feeding set. We'll kind of get it around, make sure that we can clear any old formula out of the bag before putting new formula into the feeding bag. We never want to put new formula on top of already old formula 
because that can cause clogging. And remember, our hang times are gonna be eight to 12 hours for a ready to feed formula, such as this one, four hours for human breast milk or a powdered formula, and two hours for any home blended formula. So since we've got some water in here to kind of rinse out the old formula, we can empty that over a sink. Make sure that there's no old formula remaining in the feeding bag. And take the other formula. Um, if it's already been opened, we'll take it out of the fridge. Or if it's a new carton, open it up and pour it into our feeding bag. We'll again secure the top. Rehang the feeding bag. At this time, you may notice you may need to replenish the flush bag as well, so please go ahead and do so at that time. If you did disconnect from the patient, reconnect as we had spoke of before. No need to flush in between since it's just a quick change out. And then what you can go ahead and do is press continue on the alarm. And since it's refilled, the pump will indicate running again and your feed will continue. To stop the feed, or when the feeding is complete, we are gonna press the hold button on the left side of the pump. This will stop our feeding. To power down the pump, again, we're gonna press this power button and hold it down for about three seconds. This will turn off our pump, and then we can discard the bag set. Remember, one set for every 24 hours can be reused within that period, but after that 24 hour period, it can be discarded. Remember again, when you're disconnecting and finishing your feeding, you'll disconnect from your patient and then flush their feeding tube and um, clamp it again. Next, we're gonna talk about using a backpack with a Kangaroo Joey feed and flush bag option. Intermountain Home Care and Hospice will provide you with a backpack so that you can be on the go when still doing your enteral or tube feeding. This is what the backpack for the Kangaroo Joey pump will look like. It will have one pocket in the front, it has Velcro from the bottom, and this way you'll be able to see the pump settings through this clear plastic window. It has one pocket throughout the back, it can be unzipped. Here we see the pouch where the pump will actually sit. And this back area is where you'll set the bags. Okay, so I have added the feed and flush bags into the back section of the zipper part of the backpack. What I did was secure the neck of each bag set with the um, clasps on here. We'll put one set of Velcro over the top and then the other set, and then secure with these Velcro straps. We wanna ensure that the tubing does not kink in the backpack. I've also taken the Joey pump and secured it into this um, front pocket. What I'll do is I will feed through the bag set again as how I had done previously. Close the door. No tubing is kinked. And we are good to zip up the backpack. This tubing will stick out, can connect to the patient, and the backpack can be worn as either a side or on the back. Note that because the pump is not hooked up to the AC outlet, it only has 18 hours of battery life. So be mindful that it won't die when you're somewhere in public and will need it to work for you. In terms of charging the Joey feeding pump, we talked about before that it will come with a charging cable. Once you unplug the charging cable, the pump will solely rely on battery power. The battery life of the Joey pump is going to be 18 hours on a full charge. In order to recharge the battery, simply take the charging cable, plug it into the back until you hear a click, and then um, it will charge and when you have a full battery, it will show in the bottom corner a battery symbol with a fully black fill. If you have any charging issues that don't resolve, please call the Entral team at Intermountain Home Care and Hospice 
they're able to talk you through any issues you may have or replace the pump in case it's something that can't be figured out over the phone. If at any time you have other questions or errors come up on the pump, the last page of this troubleshooting guide is very, very helpful. Refer to this to explain what the error codes are and what you can do to alleviate them. If you do have any further questions, an important number to remember is our Entral feeding team. That will be provided at the end slide of this video. To use the additional pump features, press the More button shown at the bottom of the screen with the corresponding button on the left. On this More Options screen, you will see the following options. Buzzer, History, Languages, Continuous, Intermittent, and Done. Let's select Buzzer. On this Buzzer screen, you can select if you would like it increased for the louder volume, or decrease for a lower volume. You'll see the volume as it appears on this side. Press Done when you have the desired volume you would like. Next is History. When we select History, it will tell us how much formula has infused in the last, this is set to one hours. You can change this amount up to 72 hours to see how much formula has been infused in that time frame. Press Done. Languages is the third option. If we press Languages, it will give us a list of possible options to change the language to. You can scroll through using the top two left buttons. We'll keep it on English for our purposes and select Done. Last is Continuous Intermittent. For our purposes, we would prefer that you keep it on continuous mode, so ensure that there's a check mark by continuous mode, and select Done. Thank you so much for watching this video and learning how to use the Kangaroo Joey feeding pub with the feed and flush bag.